The solar system is the area of space that has been investigated by mankind most. People have been observing the planets, satellites and other celestial bodies in the space around the Sun for hundreds of years. Thanks to their efforts, the space objects lying closest to us have been studied comparatively well. But as for areas beyond Neptune's orbit, there are thousands of equally interesting celestial bodies hiding in the forbidding and freezing dark and each of them keeps its own secrets to itself. One of these dark, sullen worlds doggedly following their orbit is Quawa, and that is the object we will talk about today. The beginning of the 21st century heralded a whole bunch of sensational discoveries in astronomy. A number of objects close to Pluto in terms of their size were detected one after another in remote areas of the solar system. One of the first objects to be spotted was Quawa. The discovery was made by Chadwick Trujillo and Michael Brown in 2002 while they were studying images of the star sky taken in Palomar Observatory. At first, the detected object was thought to be slightly smaller than Pluto, but after double-checking, the planetoid turned out to be much smaller. Still, this celestial body remains one of the top 10 largest bodies in the Kuiper Belt. This area in space looks like a remarkably wide ring encompassing the solar system beyond Neptune's orbit. To give you an idea of its size, here are its basic parameters. Its inner radius measures approximately 30 astronomical units, with its outer radius roughly 55 astronomical units. Apart from a number of small objects, there are several relatively large dwarf planets to be found here – Pluto, Eris, Makemake and others. Kwawa is one of these too. Now let's talk about it in more detail. This celestial body looks like a flattened ellipsoid. Its equatorial diameter measures about 1,138 km and the distance between its poles is 1,030 km or so. This makes Kwawa's diameter about twice as small as Pluto's, with Charon just barely beating it in terms of size. Kwawa's mass is estimated at around 1.4 times 10 to the power of 21 kilograms, which makes it around 10 times lighter than Pluto. Kwawa's average density is approximately 2,200 kilograms per cubic meter, which is typical of dwarf planets. The planetoid is thought to be made up of mostly rocks and water vapor, just like other objects in the Kuiper Belt. Estimates show the intensity of radioactive decay in Kwawa's interior to be too low to melt the lower layers of ice. That is why, in all likelihood, there is no subsurface ocean under the ice shell on this planetoid. Now let's see how freezing cold it is on Kwawa. Its average surface temperature is predictably low at approximately 44 Kelvin, or 229 degrees Celsius below zero. Even at temperatures this low, frozen gases in the vacuum of space gradually vaporize and form a remarkably rarefied atmosphere that is made up mostly of methane. However, the density of the planetoid's atmosphere is at least a hundred million times lower than that of the Earth. Kwawa is known to be a rather dark celestial body, Reflecting from 10 to 20% of all light shed on it, it has a reddish hue, just like many other celestial objects in those areas of space. This color comes from impurities containing tholins, complex polymers originating in frozen methane when it is exposed to ultraviolet rays. Still, it is assumed that Kwawa contains considerably less ice and frozen gases than larger transneptunian objects mostly on account of its more modest dimensions and a weaker gravity. The freefall acceleration on Kwawa's surface is estimated at a measly 0.29 meters per square second, which is about 33 times slower than on our planet. This means that when hypothetically placed on the planetoid's surface, a human would weigh just 2 or 3 kilos. Investigations and observations show the surface of the object to contain crystalline water ice. However, the detected modification of ice may form only at temperatures not lower than 110 Kelvin or 163 degrees Celsius below zero, 
which is at least 66 Kelvin higher than the current average temperature on the planetoid. According to one of the hypotheses as to this discrepancy, the detected ice may have formed in the dwarf planet's interior, where the temperatures are higher on account of radioactive decay of heavy elements. The ice probably got ejected as a result of cryovolcanic activity and so spilled out on the surface. Another hypothesis claims the anomalous ice to have appeared on the planetoid as a result of meteorite bombardment. Spectral analyses reveal Kwawa to contain small amounts of solidified methane and ethane, although here their concentration is considerably lower than on the surfaces of other, larger trans-Neptunian objects. By slowly evaporating, frozen hydrocarbons replenish Kwawa's atmosphere, although the planetoid's gravity isn't strong enough to keep the gas molecules close to the surface. Thus, Kwawa is slowly but surely getting stripped of its atmosphere and in billions of years' time will lose it completely. Like most celestial objects, the planetoid rotates on its axis. The rotation period hasn't been gauged exactly yet, but judging by its luminosity, which repeatedly changes following a certain pattern, it is estimated at roughly 18 hours. Kwawa follows an almost circular orbit around the Sun, which takes it slightly less than 289 years to complete. The orbit eccentricity is just 0.04, which is two and a half times more than that of our Earth, and twice as small as that of Mars. It takes sunlight about five hours to reach Kwawa's surface. It has been calculated that the planetoid last reached its aphelion in 1932, with a distance to the center of our system approximately 45 astronomical units. Now, Kwawa is on its way to its orbit's perihelion, which is estimated to be reached in about 2075. The distance between the planetoid and the Sun will be 42 astronomical units at that point. Its orbit doesn't allow Kwawa to approach Neptune closely enough to experience this planet's gravity pull. Such like space objects are referred to as Cubiwanos, and Kwawa is a typical representative of this class, alongside Varuna and Makimaki. Kwawa's orbit is tilted to the ecliptic plane at an angle of 8 degrees, and this fact leads scientists to believe it to confirm that Neptune did have some gravitational influence on the dwarf planet a long while ago. Currently, Kwawa is known to have only one satellite, dubbed Waywat. It was detected in 2006. This small astronomical body follows a moderately elongated orbit around the planetoid. Its aphelion is estimated at approximately 16.5 thousand kilometers. In its perihelion, Waywat is anything from 12,000 to 13,000 kilometers away from the surface of the dwarf planet. The satellite completes a full orbit around Kwawa roughly every 12.5 days. To date, its orbit's other parameters haven't been gauged with any degree of certainty yet. Waywad's diameter measures around 170 kilometers. Assuming the dwarf planet and its satellite are similar in terms of their makeup, Waywad should be 2,000 times lighter. The gravity of an object this light is not enough to make it spherical. This must be the reason why Waywad's shape is irregular just like that of most other asteroids and small astronomical bodies in the solar system. Taking into account the current stage of space technology's development, it is estimated that it would take a space probe slightly over 13 and a half years to reach Kwawa. To date, only the New Horizons probe has approached it closest. In 2016, it took a number of images of Kwawa from a distance of 14 astronomical units. It is known that astronomers in the US and China considered an option of sending an automatic space probe to remote objects of the solar system, and Kwawa was on the list of potential objects of interest. Still, so far there were no official announcements and confirmations as to planned scientific missions there. And so, just like countless other worlds out there, Kwawa is still waiting for its pioneers. Dear friends, if there is an object in space you are particularly interested in, but we haven't made a video about it yet, feel free to tell us which one it is in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, 
we'd be happy if you hit the like button and subscribed if you still haven't done so. We in our turn will do our best to produce new, exciting and informative videos. Let's keep in touch.